I'm just going to go through a few quick slides. Um, most of the, the point of this um, meeting today really is to um, show you guys the live demo. So I don't want to waste too much time going through uh, basic slides because uh, it is much better demonstrated uh, in the live interface. But I, I just want to give sort of a high-level introduction and introduction to some, some um, definitions um, and some concepts within FACES that will, that will be helpful for, for understanding, um, for understanding the, um, the, the, uh, the, the demonstrations that David and Wei and, and Meng will, will give you guys. First of all, a couple of motivations for FACEIT. So the goals of FACEIT are to integrate uh, a multiplicity of data formats uh, to enable data discovery of big and diverse data sets, um, to provide broad access to high performance and high throughput uh, computational tools and resources through easy to use interfaces, and finally to enable collaboration around the sharing of data analysis, uh, workflows, results, visualizations, uh, and etc. It uh, builds on a whole lot of, uh, of existing um, uh, technologies that have been developed both at the uh, University of Chicago Computation Institute and Argonne National Labs, uh, as well as uh, Penn State and lots and lots of other places. The basic platform is called Globus Galaxies, which integrates the technologies of, um, of um, uh, something called Globus with technology something called Galaxy. Um, there are several different other Globus Galaxy instances, the most well-developed of which is one called Globus Genomics. There's also one for cosmology and materials science and et cetera. So um, we're just one in a sort of a family of different uh, science gateways for, for enabling this kind of stuff, which really helps us to be able to leverage off of the, the technology and development that these other gateways uh, are accomplish. Uh, again, the point is to be able to enable tool and workflow execution, publication, discovery, sharing, identity management, data management, task scheduling. And all of this is accomplished by um, um, resources on um, shared resources on Amazon EC2, uh, which I which I would like to point out have been much of which has been generously donated to us uh, uh, from Amazon. So we we have a lot of resources that we can share with you guys that we can enable you guys to use on Amazon free of charge because of um, quite large grants of free compute time that have been given us to us by Amazon. The biggest, um, the most important sort of technological component that goes into FACET is a tool called Galaxy, which was originally developed for biomedical research and has uh, been sort of successfully used for that for several years. It, it's an open web-based platform. Um, it's written in, um, written in Python. And uh, there are tons of interesting tutorials if you want to look at some of the more basic um, tutorials for, for Galaxy and some of the more basic functionality, the original functionality of Galaxy. There's really a ton of interesting stuff at, at the original Galaxy project, which you can find um, at usegalaxy.org. Um, and I'd encourage you to check that out if you're curious to, to learn more about the genesis uh, of, of data. Um, okay, so just a few basic definitions, and then I'll, we'll get into the, the live demos. So um, first of all, this is the, the intro page here. It's screenshotted here just so you can have some um, familiarity with, with what the interface looks like. The interface um, basic instances are built by and for target user communities, and they're really built around the familiar data types that are used within that community, uh, as well as the, the sort of programs that are common to that community and that are used to operate on those data types generate, transform, and analyze and visualize data. So in this case, it's that and AppSim and Quad UI and ACMO UI and all those pieces of code that you guys have come to be familiar with. Um, the workspace uh, for, for the FACET interface is divided into three different panels. Uh, on the left, you have uh, your tools panel, which is where all of the different tools and apps are, are stored in different dropdowns. So you'll see it Currently, there are three, I think now maybe there are four different what we call tool sheds. There's Get Data, uh, EasySim, and RIA, and you guys will, will learn more about that. There's also um, 
um, a bunch of different options across the top. The most important one of being, which of workflow, which you'll see used, and then finally there's uh, the history. So um, just quickly running through some of these things. Um, one of the great features of Faceit is a, a really diverse set of mechanisms for how you get data into the platform, into your histories, and into uh, the tools that you're using. So Faceit provides access to a really diverse number of both local and remote data stores. Um, it, 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 and we'll show some examples of those in a second. It also allows you to upload data directly from your local machine and store it uh, in your history in the cloud and then use it from there. Um, and it provides connections to remote data archives. Um, the examples we'll show is Daymet and, and the AgMIP data browser. Um, so on the tool side, tools are, are organized in, uh, by functionality uh, and or by project for, for easy and logical access. Um, and groups like AgMIP can create their own custom toolboxes and even individual groups within AgMIP if they wanted to, to create their own um, toolbox quite easily. Um, users can add and modify and publish tools and string them together and et cetera, et cetera. Workflows, which are, are the most important thing, the technology platform is really built around about around creating and sharing workflows. Uh, workflows are just a, a way to string together <coughs> tools or apps into reusable pipelines that can be um, shared and repeated over and over and over again. Um, and uh, one of the great features that we're really, really going to try to exploit within the AgMIP projects, and I think is one of the things I'm most excited about, is um, the sort of working style that um, a lot of the a lot of the Galaxy communities use, in which sort of expert users and people that are very familiar with the platform um, and very familiar with IT technologies um, can create you know these very very complex workflows and then publish and distribute them to uh, collaborators and participants around the world, who then can can use them by just taking them, uploading their own data sets, and putting their own data sets into the same pipeline. So it creates this really nice multi-level uh, um, of usability. So not everyone has to be um, a complete and total expert um, within you know, a regional integrated assessment group. If there's just one person who's really an expert in creating these pipelines, then they can create these workflows, publish them with examples, um, distribute them to their colleagues throughout the group who can then reuse them, apply their own data, tweak some parameters, change these settings, you know, modify the figures, and, and really create their own um, science from existing pipelines. Finally, the history is really a lot more than just a history. The history is a place where you can record data and processing together in one place. It really records every single thing you do and when you're in face it is recorded in the history. Uh, it includes embedded metadata. It includes the provenance and the order that everything is done. Uh, it includes sneak peeks and visualizations and, and a really, really diverse place. And histories don't just record what you're doing, but they can also be sort of curated by the user and they can be published as, as completely full um, reusable data archives uh, with, like, and basically fully functional portable workspaces. So you can go in, and we have a number of published histories that are available in the production instance, and we'll be adding some new ones. You can really go in, and by importing an existing published history, you can start using advanced functionality immediately. Um, you, 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 the, the histories come with all the data they need already embedded. They come with um, all of the um, all of the processes, all the metadata, and all the provenance already included. If you've already seen these links uh, have been sent out to you in the emails, but I just want to encourage you again to check out um, both learnfaceit.org and the YouTube channel for, for Faceit. There are some really good demo videos, and, and as soon as we can, we'll, we'll even be posting the video from this demo to that YouTube channel. So please feel free uh, to check that out. And that is... Um, Almost all for me, except I forgot about this slide that, that segues into, uh, into David's presentation. Um, so we, we created a tool shed uh, called
called Easy Sam, which is which is um, uh, uh, basically designed for doing really really crop you know, simple crop model simulations. So it only allows you to change a few different parameters in the experimental setup, like the amount of fertilizer you want to apply, whether you want to do irrigation or not, uh, the planting dates, um, and create very simple um, experiments. But it provides you access to lots and lots of different um, global and regional gridded uh, climate and soil data sets. So it has the, uh, a, a really diverse uh, array of soil and climate data sets. And also a lot of um, simple tools for doing um, climate scenario generation through delta methods and stuff that we've worked with the Agnum climate team to create. And we'll be expanding a lot on that. EasySim is really meant to be sort of an introduction um, to the FACET platform. And so uh, now I'm going to switch over to David. And David's going to talk for a few minutes about EasySim. <laughs> 